what is our goal right so our goal is not to just open up random stores but we aim to set up a network of 1000 stores over india right uh, out of those 1000 stores our plan is to open the next the first 100 within uh, this year financial year ending at 24 so that is what we are trying to do we are trying to like i said not just create supermarkets but we are trying to make ebos right so what is an ebo an ebo is uh, the full form of an ebo is an exclusive brand outlet right so when we talk about an ebo right we don't uh, you know we don't just say that okay come to the store uh, there is grocery you come you get your grocery and you leave right like i was saying an ebo when you are talking about an exclusive brand outlet it should look and feel like one right when you uh, make an exclusive brand outlet you have proper uh, you know channels for trade the proper uh, you know so everything is science like you know data based when we are talking about an ebo everything is experienced and data based it is not just random as to how the majority of the indian retail is right like i was saying that we plan to open a network of 1000 stores over india under the brand name fair shop right right now the target states are punjab and delhi ncr right and of course the hundreds uh, and thousand stores are not just in punjab and delhi ncr so we gradually want to go pan india but these two states are what we have to what we have planned to start with punjab delhi ncr and even uh, a little bit of northeast right so when we talk about what are we selling at fair shop right so we have a product mix, mix of 50% white label and 50% market leaders and non competing in non competing categories right so what is why do we do that right why not just have you know 100% brands right why not just uh, have your store filled with 100% assortment which is uh, owned by global and national players right because uh, in india one thing that you, that we have understood uh, doing business in india in the retail market is that in india every small part right so even within the city limits of delhi right there are four parts to delhi north east west south the consumer in West Delhi might want something different than consumer in North Delhi, right? This is there is no science behind it, but the consumers living in different parts of Delhi, right? They want a different product mix. They want their national products to be there, the products that have been consumed by their families for generations, right? The products which are not even national players, they are local players, but still the local market demands for it. They want it. They need it, right? So that is why we have come up with an assortment mix of 50% white label and 50% branded, which, uh, you know, tends to make the customer more happy and in return tends to make us more money. So like, uh, I already went through this. So our mission, right? So our mission is fair prices, fair quality than that constitute constitutes fair shop, right? When we talk about fair prices and fair quality, right? So there is one thing that I am very truly a believer in, and that is that the consumer is god when it comes to retail right if you are true to your consumer your consumer will be true to you right so what we are trying to do is we are trying to not offer just the best prices we are saying that we will offer you the fairest deals we will give you the fairest prices we will give you the fairest qualities right so these are our trust building factors right these are our uh, company uh, trust pillars right that will provide you these three things right and you can always expect this from fair shop what fair shop is essentially trying to do is like I said, we are trying to create a network of 100 stores within the financial year of 2024. And after that, so what Fair Shop is trying to do essentially is create a network of 100 stores. And once that network is established, we are going to move towards unified commerce. So unified commerce again is a concept that does not exist in India as of today, right? Which I do really want to introduce. When we, I'm just going to go briefly over what unified commerce means. When we talk about unified commerce, Unified commerce is not just B&M stores. B&M is brick and mortar, right? Not just e-com, right? Not just retail as a service, right? It's three individual businesses combined into one in which every cost center acts as a revenue point and fuels the business forward, right? So that is what Fair Shop's uh, vision is for the long term, right? However, the short term goal is to open 100 B&M stores and launch an e-com by the year end 2024. So as you can see, there are a few pictures of our store right so we do provide an international shopping experience so the store is directly rivaled uh, if you see this direct rivals of the stores are not indian retailers but international retailers right the quality of the fixtures the the quality of the product the quality of uh, the racks 
right everything is not according to indian standards but to international standards right what makes fair shop different right so what is our what are our unique offerings right how will we stand out from everyone <clears throat> so like i said the first and one of the most major things is that we are aiming to set up everything as a unified retail so this flywheel you can uh, refer to this flywheel so what unified retail essentially means is that you have a brick and mortar store you have an e-com platform your brick and mortar store is a revenue generating point right but at the same time your e-com platform is also a revenue generating point however your your brick and mortar store also becomes a cost center because it fulfills it acts as a fulfillment center for your e-com business as well right and wherever you have to open up uh, just a you know a dark store or a warehouse that warehouse automatically becomes as a revenue point as well because that acts as a fulfillment center for your bnm so this is like just a very uh, you know uh, zoomed out view on what unified retail is but yes that is what essentially we are offering today other than that all of our stores are open. so we are the first grocery retail in india to give you access to 24/7 x uh, 24/7 access to an entire range of grocery so what i mean by that is that there are while there are other players in the 24/7 industry no one has been able to uh, you know give you access to more than 10000 products so what we have essentially created is an environment where our customers can walk into the store at 2 am like not that this is not an hypothetical actually this is what we have uh, even today right that where our customers do walk into our stores at 2 3 am and they are doing our monthly they are doing their monthly grocery buying there at that point because they like it better when it's uh, you know a bit more uh, pleasant and a bit more flexible at the night right other than that we do often free express home deliveries what do we mean by express home deliveries we mean that we offer uh, guaranteed next hour deliveries right so a question that might pop into some people's head is that okay one hour deliveries that is not very good right because we have players who are uh, you know de- delivering in 10 minutes and 15 minutes nowadays right but again i would like to bring your attention back to that they are convenience services however we are a grocery retail and when we talk about grocery retails who are physical stores working on our scale and working on our store sizes the delivery the traditional delivery timings even to, to even till date is usually next day right the examples for this could be flipkart wholesale it could be dmart right it could be metro cash and carry right they all deliver next day however we do deliver within the hour right so we have an assortment of more than 10000 products that means that we are a truly one stop shop for all our for all our customers other than that we have again uh, one of the unique uh, selling perspectives that we have uh, introduced into indian retail is an sis model so what sis means is store in store right so what we have decided and what we have learned is that it is best to do what you do the best right so what that means is that what we have done that certain expertise areas in the store for example our stores are open 24/7 so of course we do uh, have a restaurant in our store we need to have a restaurant in our store to cater to the consumer needs because consumers customers they want food during the night time so instead of making our own cloud kitchen and going through that entire process what we have done is that we have brought down an sis model in which we have other big name brands come and partner with up us to cater to certain sections of the stores for example right now you will see a haldirams logo we have haldirams partnered with us uh, so in our existing five running stores there is an haldirams outlet within our store to cater to everyone so when we talk about sis sis is actually a way of maximizing your revenue from a certain square feet of space in indian grocery retail one of the biggest cruxes and one of the biggest issues of any retailer is that there is only you know limited amount of space in the store and you cannot like just selling uh, you know grocery like you know just selling you only have enough space and you are just selling you know daily staples daily item products and the margin there is limited so if by uh, you know by introducing this sis model i have also found out a way to maximize your per square feet revenue in the store right and of course the consumer when a big brand is associated with you the consumer they automatically you know they tend to trust you more they tend to you know want to do business with you more so yes we have uh, tackled all of those problems successfully till now so here are some stat uh, just you know the, just some numbers and stats about our indian economy and as to how the future of this business and how the future of any business in india for that matter looks like right so india as of today is the sixth largest economy right 
uh however it is the fastest growing gdp right so what that means is that india is like we all know that india is one of the biggest populations right so what that is that of course bec- you know that becomes a very big advantage for us because that means that there are so many customers when we talk about per square feet area that you know that the volume is very huge in this business that there are so many customers and that customers the, those customers they create opportunities and that is just you know something that we can cash in india has an opportunity to become a 10 trillion dollar economy in the next 10 years right so this is uh, estimated that india could become a 10 trillion dollar economy so as compared to today if we do actually become a 10 trillion dollar economy that increases our business prospects right by about 25 times right so moving on uh so like this shows right so in india what we have seen the trend in the past years right is that people are moving up the ladder right so the affluence is rising the growth of uh, you know metropolitans and tier 1 and tier 2 and tier 3 they are rising right they are all just getting... and ruler and the rural uh, area uh the rural cities in india they have been reducing over the time right so what that shows us that the people are climbing up the ladder and when they do climb up when anyone climbs up the ladder they start moving from unorganized to organized sector because they start craving luxury right they um start uh, wanting to pay for the services and the goods right so yeah that's how india is looking like today so like i think i already covered this that india again uh, is uh, evolving the consumer is evolving evolving and like we said that we are aiming to be a unified trade right so one of the things that play into being a plays into being a unified trade is that india is one of the tech, leading technological powers in the world now it is one of the biggest technological hub so that means that the indian consumer they are you know they are more comfortable than they ever were with technology and they are more willing to use, use it yeah so what this tells us is that there is high potential in fmcg right because the penetration in india is very low as of now right because if we see as compared <coughs> excuse me so if we see as compared to you know other counterparts other large economies for example china right where the fmcg per capita consumption uh you know uh is almost triple than what it is in india right yes so there is like a lot of opportunity there is like a lot of money to be made right so after this what i would like to uh, cover are the four stages of an industry right of this industry in fact as to how this industry has evolved right so if we were to go back in time right if you were go if we were to go back 50 years right there was no, no supermarkets in india there were no supermarkets the only business in india were the local uh, you know mandis right there was only an organized sector the only business people the only way to buy groceries were to go go to a local mandi right get them to give you whatever you want and you probably would barter something right but then we moved towards the next step in the chain and they were smaller organized players or you can call, call them mom and pop shops which till date still do exist right so mom and pop stores they are you know a bit of both they are a little bit unorganized they are a little bit organized right but then the next step right to uh, the industrial ev- ev- evolution in retail was uh, in fact modern retail right specialized modern retail right because what uh, yeah it started in 2000 with the company big bazaar right so they saw the opportunity that no one in india is doing modern retail and they decided to uh, catch on to that right so they were the forefathers of modern retail in india so that is when modern retail came right so what is the next but what is the next paradigm shift in retail now okay so we know it was all unorganized before right then uh, your local mom and pop shops came then modern retail outlets came what is the next paradigm shift right so according to us at fair shop we believe that the next paradigm shift is unified commerce right so again bringing you back to unified retail when you uni- when we talk about unified retail it is a mixture of mom and pop sh- uh, it is a mixture of sorry excuse me it is a mixture of modern retail plus e-commerce right when you combine the both they both become complementing businesses and that is where the ne- industry is headed next uh, so please move move on yeah so coming to the strategies oh, so before i started the strategies i see a question there so uh, mr bora 
apart from haldiram's any other brand pipeline uh yes uh, actually there are so haldiram's is a food outlet when we talk about food we do have other uh, name chains as well for example btw or bitu tikki wala we have gyanis on board right other than that we have uh, you know we are not just exploring into food we are exploring into apparels as well so we have brands like cob on uh, on board as well who have like over 1000 outlets um over the world now right so we do have other brands in the pipeline and we are just growing that every day right so yes coming back to the strategies for capital group so so this is our value chain right so when we say value chain what do we mean by that right so capital group obviously we have fair shop fair shop is a uh, right so fair shop is a supermarket right so what we are working on essentially is a distribution model right now right fair shop is what fair shop is distributing the uh, things to the consumer right so there are two sides to it one like i said are corporate tie ups right corporate tie ups what do corporate tie ups means corporate tie ups uh, are like uh, haldirams are like i said uh, btw are like i said cop right those are our corporate tie ups right um, so a combination of capital group corporate tie ups and developments right <clears throat> along with fair shop fair shops distribution distribution channel this all contributes to an ebo right all of this combined is what makes us an ebo and not just a grocery market right not just a supermarket right uh, so like you know so like we say we keep saying that we are a supermarket right but what does a supermarket mean are there any other types of markets yes there are right so if we move on can we move on to the next slide please yes so like i was saying yes there are so there are convenience so there is a convenience format then there are hypermarkets and then there are supermarkets right so what are hypermarkets right so hypermarkets <clears throat> hypermarkets are essentially big box stores right if we talk about for example flipkart wholesale 30 40000 square feet stores right so what are the goals of a hypermarket hypermarkets allow the customers to satisfy all their routine weekly shopping needs in one trip right so a hypermarket essentially does not is is not just focused on grocery right so what what is fair shop focused on fair shop is a grocery focused grocery driven business right however a hypermarket grocery is just a part of it it is uh, focused on various other things as well right for example apparels electronics so and so right so what exactly is a convenience store right a convenience store are your mom and pop shops your mom and pop shops can be categorized as convenience stores right so a convenience store is a store where you would basically go for uh, you know instant needs for example you have people over at your house right you are out of uh, cola right you want a can of coke you will probably send uh, you know you'll probably go to a convenience a mom and pop shop because it's very near to you right and you'll get one uh, you know one can of coke for the guest right however when we come to a supermarket what do we aim at right what does a supermarket play at a supermarket is something right you know a store where you would visit when you know that okay my guests are going to come up okay i need my daily groceries as well right so let's go and you're not going to buy one can of coke from there you're probably going to tell them that okay give me a carton of coke please right and then you're going to get your daily essential needs as well right hypermarkets are usually located at the outskirts of the cities right because finding uh, you know big areas in metropoles is very hard right so it is usually located outside city limits right so it makes it an essential so the target customer for the hypermarkets are usually tier 2 and tier 3 people right however it does uh, you know it does make it very hard for any one from the metropoles to go there so in metropoles the go to uh, market for any consumer are supermarkets so what are we making we are making a supermarket for our ebo right so what does that mean like we i think we have already covered that right access possession transactions search of course right time uh, tidy clean stores right flexibility of payments quick access to the store ample parking look uh, you know good feel into the store having the proper products that the consumer actually wants not just having products but the products that the consumer want so being that means being data driven right fair prices fair quality right best in class promotions best in class services right i think that sums sums it up as to what we are trying to do so after that how did we come to franchising right what are our franchising uh, expansion plans right 
so what we want to go do is we want to go big with our supermarket concept right because a supermarket concept is something that uh, you know targets every every city and every class of person right you don't need a lot of space to open up a supermarket right so that means that your target market becomes bigger so you can cater to every every uh, you know class of people in your city so of course so there is a swot analysis on uh, on our brand right so what are our strengths right so our strengths so i'd say that the biggest strength is not even mentioned in this presentation so my biggest strength is actually that i have been doing this like so my family has been doing this food business for the past 50 years so our biggest strength is that we understand the products like no one does we understand the market like no one does and we have connects and connections in the market that gives us an edge over our competitors right so of course we have a large portfolio of sks right we are offering 10000 plus products as of today right so we already have a good distribution channel right end to end distribution and supply chain channel right so you don't have to worry about that because like i said because we have been in the market for so long because we have such ties our pricing is very market competitive usually we are like you know so when it comes to pricing in delhi at least pricing is king right there is a price war between retail stores very often so i i'm very proud to say that i haven't really lost any war till now we are very strong in pricing and we are very competitive to the market and we can even go further down when we need to right because again and because of our uh, hold in the market we have very strong gross margins even after being very competitive in pricing right so what are the opportunities right so opportunities are that fmcg industry like we saw from the data before right fmcg industry is one of the fastest growing industries in the indian economy indian economy is the fastest growing gdp and fmcg is the fastest growing industry so you know that sets some perspective as to what the opportunities and what the scope of you know uh, of the business that we are talking about here is right other than that you know we often times right so india is moving to from unorganized to organized sectors right and Still, till date, seventy percent of the entire retail business is unorganized. However, that number is reducing every year, every subsequent year, right? So we, when we create an EBO, we can showcase our entire range of products, making consumer buy more, right? And because, like we discussed uh, earlier, that the consumer is go going up the ladder, right? So that means that their demand for modern trade is increasing, right? no one wants to you know the consumer who is going up the ladder they don't want to go to an unorganized market they don't want to go to a mandi they don't want to go to a mom and pop shop they want to come to an air conditioned modern retail store where they can bring you know it becomes like an outing for them they can bring their family they can look at everything and they can shop in peace so but while we discuss threats and opportunities we have to also discuss threats right because uh, we have to look at both sides of the coin so what are our threats so of course one of the threat is competition because this industry is growing at a very fast pace there is bound to be competition competition is always a threat but we are very confident when it comes to competition because of our given experience and because of our given hold in the market we are very competitive and we know the ins and outs of the business so that is why we are able to you know uh, lock horns with even the biggest players so just an example uh, we uh, have a 24/7 store and we have about uh, the smallest size that we have is about 5000 square feet as of today wherever so wherever i have opened up the stores there are no national players who are very successful there right but we are because the indian consumer is still you know it still wants to go to the underdog and what we are able to do the big chains are not able to do because we are extremely flexible we want to make any changes we make them in an instant however the other the, the competition takes a lot of time to do that right so what model are we offering franchise owned franchise operated right also known as fofo uh, in short right in this model right what exactly is fofo right and are there any other models right so just to you know uh, give a brief glossary of all so there is of course coco model which is company owned company operated so all five of our stores as of today are based on this model only right so then there are foco models which is franchise owned company operated right then there is focm right which is franchise owned company managed i think the names are very self explanatory so i'm not going uh, in depth right then there are licensed franchisee partners model as well however we have we have opted for a fofo model right because a uh, fofo model we believe that in when we talk about a fofo model 
you know, uh, it would be a very good partnership between us and the franchisee because we'll both have incentive to grow, right? So what uniqueness we have done in our model, right? So the ownership belongs to because it's franchisee owned, so it of course belongs to the franchisee, right? Investments are done because they are the owners, so the investments are done by franchisees. Operations are man- operations are managed by the franchisee. However, we do give you complete uh, in depth end to end training for the operations, and we do give you support uh, for running the stores as well, right? Brand guidelines we provide, right? And the entire revenue that you own at the store, right? Whatever is your margin, whatever is your scanned margin that you own at the store, we give that out to the franchisee. We don't take anything from that, right? What does the company get? Why is the company giving the entire margin to the franchisee, right? So what the company gets is that we get uh, to go and move. So what we are looking for today is, uh, you know, franchisee partners to grow our brand with, right? Not just to make money from them, right? That is not our goal. Our goal is to grow our brand with them, right? So what does the company gain? The company gains visibility, right? And the company gains, uh, you know, a company gains gains a path which leads us to uh, make the unified commerce re- a reality, right? So that is what the company uh, aims to get out of it, right? So whatever revenue we generate at the store, whatever revenue we make at the store, we give 100% of that revenue to the franchisee. We do not take any cuts. We do not take any commissions. We don't take anything, right? So that is our franchisee model. Anything, everything that you work for, you get to keep. What are our ideal partner profiles, right? Who would be best suited for this business? This business needs slightly large investments, right? So when we say slightly large, when we look at the volume and the scope of this business, that does not become slightly large. But when we talk about an essential starting point, we have to say that the investment is slightly large. So who we are looking for, we are looking for stable investors, right? Because like I said, we are looking to get brand partners to grow the brand with, right? So we need people from a stable background, preferably, uh, you know, second generation entrepreneurs, right? Uh, who want to diversify into new businesses and op- and you know explore more uh, opportunities? Other than that, of course, any entrepreneur I believe needs to be you know strategic, right? Needs to know the basics of marketing, right? Need needs to know how to control their finances, right? So these all are the some key roles and some key features that we look for in our partners, right? So other than that. Why would you want to partner with us, right? What are the reasons to partner with Capital Group? So like I said, Capital Group is one of the oldest companies when it comes to FMCG trade. We have, if you want to get into the retail business, right? I think we would be one of the best people to get into the retail business with because we understand the retail market. In fact, we understand the food and the FMCG market like very little people do, right? Being one of the biggest exporters in India, we understand international markets as well and being, uh, you know, uh, and having startings from, you know, very humble startings from a wholesale business, we understand the domestic market really well as well, right? Other than that, we have the vision to, you know, I think one of the most important things in any startup are the visions, right? And we have a vision to make this company into a unified retail, right? Which which no one in the Indian market today is even thinking about doing. So that presents us with an opportunity, right? To create something really good here, right? Other than that, we, uh, you know, give franchisees certain support functions, right? Of course. So when you're joining, when we, when you're, you know, joining your forces with us, we are not going to leave you hanging, right? We are going to make every, you know, we are going to use everything in our power to make sure that you are as successful as possible, right? We provide you. So from the start of the project, right? We provide you a detailed project report, right? We help you in site selection. Our entire NSO team and project team goes and they choose the sites for you. And we only choose the best sites from which we are, you know, from which we are confident we are going to be able to drive business, right? After that, we have our designers and architecture, uh, you know, and architects to design the entire store for you, right? We then have our NSO and BD team who would, you know, give you, put you in touch with contractors, right? Who will uh, do the entire project coordination for you, provide you with the equipment, so end to end, right? After after the store is built, right? We will make sure that we'll give you all the SOPs. We'll give we'll do all the screening for you for workforce, right? We will help you in uh, uh, in hiring the best and the most uh, optimal resources, right? We will train them for you, right? All your marketing strategies we will help you develop, right? In the beginning, commissioning and pre-launch activities we'll help you with that also, right? We'll do all of these things for you, right? 
other than that end to end supply chain management right end to end supply chain cost i will bear for you supply chain management i will do for you i'll make sure that you gets the products that are required for your store to be successful and on time right and on ongoing basis of course we are going to be doing uh, employee training for you we are going to be giving you all the technology upgrades that you need any new ecosystem that we introduce you are already in it right operations and quality audits you are going to do so that you also have the peace of mind that everything is going smoothly in, in your store and you know there are not no leakages in your store right so yes so be assured that we are going to be there with you at every step right so this is a little snapshot of our franchise financials as to you know how much investment do we need what kind of returns are we looking at right what is going to be the payback period right so i'll just uh, you know give you guys a brief minute to go through it and then i'll walk you through it as well so uh, the first thing that comes into play is the franchise fee so we basically charge uh, you know 1 lakh rupees per 1000 square feet and this money basically goes towards you know all covering all of those architectural costs drawings uh, equipment teams travel stay etc right so this this is what we charge right after that what revenues can we generate right so these revenues are based on our current stores so we have uh, stores based uh, working on uh, multiple models right now right so we have a, uh, a, the smallest store that we have today is 4200 square feet so we have a 4200 square feet store right so every number here is in accordance to what we are achieving right now right so the per month net revenue that we can expect is about 82 like as in about 80 lakhs or so and 1.3 cr or so or 2 cr or so from the given store sizes right after that what we can look at is the stock value right of course now to sell anything we need stock right so what we say is that we are able to rotate our stock about 2.5 times in a month right so we need an initial stock investment of about 30 lakhs for a 3000 square feet store and so on right so out of that investment right what kind of a margin are we looking at right so we look at a minimum margin of 13.5 to 14% right and that is the minimum margin again i would like to stress that point this margin can be extended upwards to about 16% but that of course requires some time right and not even some time that requires a lot of work as well from the franchisee side as well right but this again like uh, without doing anything 13.5 to 14% is what is going to be their minimum right so like i said 2.5 times stock turnover so what is the setup cost so the setup cost uh, as mentioned here goes about up to uh, you know roughly 2000 rupees per square feet right that is the setup cost for our stores right so payback right given these numbers if we you know do the after doing the math so the pay payback excluding inventory right so inventory of course i believe that inventory should not be part of you, you know it should not be calculated as part of an investment because that is an asset for you right so if we exclude the inventory we can uh, look at a payback period of 1 year 11 months which is again best in class right 5 year roi of 351% right total return in 5 years about 239 right which equates to about 23 cr right so however if we were to take into uh, take into account even the stock that we are going to put into the business then still we are going to be offering you know a payback period of 2 years 7 months which is again best in class and a 5 year roi of 245 per, 44% right Uh, again so these kinds of number in a retail business uh, i am 100% sure that no company can stand and say that we are going to be delivering this again one of the reason as to why we are able to deliver such numbers is not just because of our product mix is also because we have found various ways and techniques to maximize our per square feet revenue uh, for example one of the various techniques is sis model so of course when we talk about any expansion right there are only two ways we expand right so we have a certain plan as to where we want to be present right but we are not opposed to uh, you know adding to that plan if an opportunity presents itself right so we have uh, divided it into three phases so phase one is that we have to be you know very selective into choosing the first five uh, to eight franchisee partners to set a benchmark in the market basically because like i said i am not looking for just franchisees i am looking for business partners to grow with right and they have to also understand that you know what the company's vision is and where the company is planning to go right after that 
we evaluate each lead in the mer- in the market right to its merit without presumptions right and then of course understanding the socio economic and environmental factors of the location is very uh, important right so given on these uh, so you know given these uh, points given these criteria right we are going to be uh, finalizing about our first 5 to 10 franchisee partners in the phase 1 right in the in our second phase right we will be finalizing further you know up to 20 franchise partners right in which the filtration process would be slightly relaxed right it would be slightly relaxed because uh, at this point right we'd already have visibility in the market right we'd already have acquired a lot of stores right we'll already have you know uh, done a lot of r and d so we'd you know we'd also be open to go where the opportunity presents itself right and in phase 3 right is our consolidation phase right after the initial acquisition of opening about let's say 15 20 stores right we are going to optimize the partner channel network and we are going to uh, you know make it a free entry right for all right the filtration process is of course going to be there but we are essentially going to invite everyone right and then start analyzing uh, that okay if we want to go to that direction or not if the opportunity is presenting itself there or not right so i think this is essentially the same thing uh, that we discussed right now phase 1 2 3 so this is our rollout plan in the next uh, you know 1 uh, to 5 years these are our processes basically this is how we do the due diligence for any new franchisee right so there is an initial application form right where we understand what the profile and you know as to who the franchise partner is with us then of course there is an nda because there are a lot of things that we discuss right which are uh, basically let's call them trade secrets right then we sign a letter of intent right an loi is signed an loi is signed uh, discussing all the preliminary points right so that uh, you know we all we both have an understanding and we can stop looking for franchises and you can stop looking for businesses or upon signing of this an uh, loi we do take a token amount of about 15 to 20% of the franchise fee right uh, which is non refundable and then after that we move towards the legal formalities as in like a proper contract right and upon this proper contract is done we start our work so this is our very this is a very basic due diligence process that is followed throughout the industry we at fairshop believe that you know franchise onboarding is a very important part of building a successful network like we said that we are targeting to become uh, to create the first unified network of uh, retail in india right to build that we of course need a very strong network and franchising is one of the best ways to do that because we don't you know we don't just find people we find business partners who share the same vision with us right and then they you know push everything to go in that same direction right so on onboarding when you talk about onboarding okay onboarding actually uh, begins during the sales process right so the training process as to what will happen right so as soon as we sign the contract right so the training would begin right so once we onboard you we start training you ideally it should be a 2 to 3 day program right where we will teach you ins and outs of the trade we will teach you about our company's brands values and culture right we'll give you we'll introduce you to the entire team right we'll uh, you know we'll essentially teach you as to what the key support function areas are as to what you should do in your uh, you know daily life as a retailer right as to what sops you have to follow as to what uh, guidelines you have to follow and set as to what examples you have to follow and set as to what your uh, you know financial projection should be from this particular store as to what margins you should be making what product mix you should be keeping um, so on and so forth right of course the ma- the markets are ever changing they are dynamic right they are not static they are dynamic right so we uh, what we have planned is that uh, after a set time right we'll have a refresher training program in which as to where we stand today right as to what we have achieved till date as to what the markets require now right we can send on we can sit on that once a month right if anything has changed and we can take the corrective actions as necessary right uh, another very uh, you know important part of the entire thing is franchisee meets right so of course when we have a network then i think that network should be sharing information with each other should be acknowledging each other's pros and cons and should be working towards making the entire ecosystem better right so what i plan is that we'll have franchisee meets right where we will have motivational sections from senior management we'll have you know uh, an award ceremony for our top top performers recognition uh, ceremony for our top performers right we'll be learning from their experiences right 
हम लोग वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड वॉट द फ्रेंचाइजेज ग्रीवियंसेज वर वी कैन एड्रेस दैम राइट वी कैन फाइंड सोल्यूशन राइट वी कैन सेट आउट प्लान फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्वार्टर और सो राइट we can uh, if any uh, new company might uh, you know products are coming we can introduce that and you know so it's just going to be like a very good get together right where we can all sit we can discuss and take this business forward